Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday, February 17th, 2021. Mr. Parrot here with your rundown of what we're doing in science today. And today, what we're looking at is how the reproductive cells are going to get made in any living organism because that's how we end up getting the things with genetics going on. Um, so we're going to look at the concept called meiosis today, which you are going to see some very familiar faces here today. Um, going all the way back from mitosis, because that is where we are going to be coming from with this stuff. Um, so a lot of those phases, like interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, they're going to be popping themselves back up here again, because as you can see in the corner picture there, it's going to be dealing with a lot of the similar kind of stuff here. So... I'm going to put a Kahoot up in the uh, in Schoology that will give you a little bit of a review of mitosis, so you can take that Kahoot if you want to review yourself on those different phases, if you feel like you need that. We're going to start off class with that today, um, as with that little review. So it's only got 12 questions on it, so it's a little small little 12-question Kahoot, but it goes over our different phases that we've talked about in the past, just to get... A nice little refresher of everything. Um, since it's been like, what, November? Maybe December when we talked about that stuff? It's been like a month or two, so we might need to dust some of those things off as interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, since we're going to be dealing with those phases again. But let's look at what meiosis is to begin with. Meiosis creates for us gametes. Say that word a couple of times. Gametes. 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 Gametes create, are also known as our sex cells. So these are our reproductive cells for animals, plants, fungi, if they have male and female characteristics to them. Um, not characteristics, if they have um, the, the I guess, yeah, I guess traits, characteristics would work. Um, because some plants do end up having male parts and female parts um, to allow for the seed to develop there. So we're going to look at male versus female here. Male gametes are called sperm. Female gametes are called eggs. Uh, and there's going to be some special qualities that go along with these uh, terms here. So what is the difference between this mitosis and meiosis stuff? So we're going to lay it out on the table. What are going to be our differences? First difference is that mitosis, we only went through the division once. We started at interphase and ended at telophase, and that was it. It started everything back over. Meiosis, it's actually going to divide twice in there. So we're going to talk about how that actually works and how those steps work to there. Mitosis is responsible for creating every body cell that's in our body. So skin, organ cells, all those kind of different things come from mitosis. Meiosis creates specifically our gametes, which are our sex cells. So... In males, it is only going to create sperm cells. In females, it is only going to create egg cells. For mitosis, it has two full sets of chromosomes. One coming from mom, one coming from dad to make two. Um, that is being called a diploid today because di means two. Ploid refers to the chromosome, so it is a two matching set diploid. In humans, that means that these cells have 46 chromosomes, and it creates two cells at the end. Meiosis, on the other hand, let me move my head. There we go. Pop up back top. Meiosis divides twice, so it's going to go through division two times. Um, oh, I already mentioned some of that. Meiosis is going to have only one set of chromosomes in the end, though. And that is because... We need to split that number in half. That way, when you donate half of your DNA to your kid, that cell that you are donating with the DNA inside of it only has half of it. That is why it is only the reproductive cells that have um, this half capability. And we call that a haploid. Ha, meaning half. Ploid, still referring to the chromosome, so it has half the number of chromosomes. In humans, that means it has 23. And this actually creates for us four cells instead of just two. So it kind of does everything again afterwards. So it basically divides twice, and because it divides twice, 
things end up becoming either split in half or we end up getting more of them depending on how they split. We get two cells out of the end of regular mitosis. We end up getting four cells because the two that get created divide again to make four. So let's dive deep into why some of this stuff is going on there and what's up with these chromosomes first. Uh, first off, chromosomes come in matching sets because you have a mom set that matches up with the dad set. So you get half of your chromosomes from mom, half of your chromosomes from dad, because that's being said, half your DNA comes from mom, half your DNA comes from dad. That means 23 of each for humans. When those two combine together to form the baby, that is where you get your full set of 46. And they come in little matching pairs. That's why they are in the little X shapes. So you can see all the little dancing pairs uh, are part of the things over here in the little picture. So that's kind of what it looks like when they're by themselves. They're just one. When they're together, they have two. One from each um, parent there. Now, what is going to be happening in meiosis specifically here? Let me move my head so you can see the dancing chromosomes over there because that's going to be important for this very first step. In the first round of division, a lot of these things work the same way that we've talked about before where... Um, the different phases still hold the same phases. There's just some slight tweaks to it. Um, and in the first tweak that happens occurs in the first round of division where during prophase, the chromosomes do this process called crossing over. And what crossing over is, is where chromosomes just swap genes. They just trade them. Uh, why they do that is that it, because it makes everything just a little bit different. So that when you go to create a kid, it does have a chance of having some different capabilities to uh, end up possessing. It has some different traits, different characteristics. It's not always going to be the same. So you can see that in my picture over here with the dancing chromosomes. You can see that the one on the left is all red. The one on the right starts all blue. But then when they mix together, a little bit of that blue gets swapped over to the red. And a little bit of that red goes swapped over to the blue. So it basically exchanges some information there. Um, that way all the chromosomes kind of get scrambled up in a little bit. Um, it creates what we call genetic diversity, which means you're not exactly going to be a clone of your parent, but rather you're going to have a mixture of those parent traits um, that we've been talking about. So that's really all that changes about the first way of dividing. The rest of it follows along how we did mitosis originally. Um, you're Nucleus is going to dissolve in prophase. They're going to line up in the middle for metaphase. They're going to separate the chromosomes in half during anaphase. And they're going to form two new cells at the end of telophase. That all happens without a hitch. The second round of division, here is where the biggest thing probably happens, is that it does not start at interphase on the second go around. Interphase does not happen. And because interphase does not happen, there is no DNA replication taking place. That means the DNA does not make a copy of itself this time. And why that is so important is because because it does not make another copy, it ends up cutting the number of chromosomes in half. Because instead of making sure that both sides have um, you know, a full set, it does not get that chance to do that. And it splits itself again, making a smaller number of chromosomes to end up happening. So the number gets cut in half. Which is good because then we get 23, so we get 23 from mom, 23 from dad, make 46, which is uh, a person then in that case. So how does this all connect back up to punnets? Let me move my face again. Uh, I'll put it over this little circle here for right now. Um, is that the outside of the punnet squares are actually the gametes that we created there during meiosis. So when we split up our letters and put them over the top and on the side of the pun and square, that was actually doing meiosis there. And the separating of the gene in half so that we can show that you can either donate one or donate the other to it. So we have our um, gametes on the outside. When the gametes meet and the mom cell and the dad cell combine together to make the baby cell in the middle, that is what we end up calling a zygote. It is the combination of the 
the sperm and the egg cell. This process of going through and making a zygote is what is called fertilization, um, where you just basically combine the mom cell and the dad cell to make a baby cell. That is fertilization going on there. Here's a video that kind of wraps everything up for us today before we look at number seven, which is actually going to be next week is what we talk about number seven because we're going to do a two-day activity on Thursday and Friday of this week. Um, there's no assignment that goes along with this um, because with the little review at the beginning, going through these notes is going to be a bit. And then there's this video at the end that kind of summarizes it. Um, there's not going to be any homework that go along with it, and we are going to dive into this process of meiosis more in depth tomorrow. Um, so um, make sure you get your make sure you follow along with this stuff, and that it's trying to make some sense out of it. Um, watch the video here; it's found in the notes. Um, if you can't get it to work, let me know. I will send you a copy of it. I might also just upload it directly into. Um, the folder itself if we find that it doesn't work but it should work so it's been approved um, so it should go through the correct channels there but with that being said I hope you're doing well staying safe and I will hopefully see you tomorrow so we can do our activity in class but otherwise I'll have instructions for how you can do our activity at home um, in your safe environment see ya